Okay. So good morning once again. Good morning to all the students here online and uh, all those of you who are doing the e-learning course. I hope that you're keeping in step and uh, uh, being encouraged. Uh, just a reminder that the entire course completes on the 27th of November. So for those of you who are doing the e-learning, um, encouraging you to um, if there is any kind of a backlog to uh, get ahead and complete the assessments, complete the work that's needed so that you get your certificates by the end of the course. All right. I hope all of you all are doing well. Um, from picking up from last week, we have been looking at the foundations of parenting. And today we are going to be... Um, focusing on nurturing children. The last time we brought about the entire uh, certain principles of, of parenting and we looked at different, um, uh, we looked at discipline, we looked at uh, 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 being a role model, we looked at how, you know, we as parents need to represent the God, the Father. Today we're going to specifically look at how can we nurture children. So this uh, entire chapter is um, uh, is nurturing children not just in the faith <clears throat> but also in the practical things of living. So we we will look at uh, some of these areas. May not be completely comprehensive, but nevertheless, um, we we are attempting to make it as um, you know as whole as possible. So nurturing children. When, when we look at a parent's responsibility, <clears throat> that, that is the, the biggest responsibility of the parent is to bring about um, a good environment for the children so that they, they understand how to live, how to conduct themselves, how to build relationships with people, and most of all, how to build their relationship with God. So as, the, uh, as a parent, our responsibility is, um, is immense, and nurturing children is an intentional exercise. It's something that we, we need to do with um, caution, with um, uh, with intention and also with wisdom and prayer. Okay, so I, as we begin, um, uh, I think um, if okay, sorry, I'm on page um, 171. If you'd like to follow through, I'm on page 171 uh, of the uh, of the chapter on nurturing children. Okay, so uh, we do. We do see in many cultures, and I, I'd like to speak for my culture, that nurturance of the children um, somehow largely falls on a mother, okay? Uh, because um, a, at least in maybe an earlier generation, there were a lot of women who weren't working and they've been uh, tending the home and the care of the children, the needs of the children were all taken care of by the by the mother. Things have changed, uh, you know, as we've progressed now with with a lot of women getting into employment, getting into work, and a lot of this needs to be shared. However, in some cultures, we do find that there is a higher load that gets pushed on to the woman because of the the nature. Uh, of the role that she plays. So she could be a working mother, uh, she could be, um, you know, the, the, the main nurturer at home for the children, taking care of their needs. But even as we look at that perspective, let's look at what the, what the word says. The Bible gives very strong instructions to a father, okay? And um, if you'd like to uh, read along. If someone um, on page 171, uh, there are two verses that I want to bring to your notice. And if someone could unmute and read, I'd like you to read Genesis 18, 19 and Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. If somebody could unmute and read that, that'll be wonderful. Genesis 19. 
verse 4 to 12 verse 8 uh, chapter 18 verse 19 genesis 18 okay, genesis genesis 18 19 it says for i know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the lord to do justice and judgment that the lord may bring upon abraham that which he had spoken of him amen Thank you, blessing. Thank you. One more, Malachi chapter four, verses five and six. Anybody? Okay, Malachi chapter four, verse five to six. It says, "Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers." to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest i come and smite the earth with a curse thank mm. you thank you blessing so we do see that there is an instruction that is given to the fathers to be able to take their place in nurturing and fathering their children um if we look back at Uh, the fourth, the sorry, the the chapter on where we spoke about roles in marriage. One of the biggest roles that is given to a husband is to lead the family, is to be in a place of leadership. So God does desire that the father it, it takes the place to instruct the children about who God is. and we see um, you know in the second verse if you if you look in uh, on on that same page it talks of how you know joshua makes the uh, the oath that for his, as for his family and him he will serve the lord so the responsibility lies in the hands of a father to be able to take the stand for god and take the stand and the ownership of leading the household to serve the lord and that means the children also and there are no two ways of this there is that is something that god has instituted for the fathers to do and while doing so that's that's how you see the hearts of the fathers turn to their children and in turn the hearts of the children turning to their fathers because when the father takes the rightful place or as a husband you take the rightful place in leading the home leading um uh, uh the 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 home into worship and nurturing them in the faith and in the things of god it positions you for a place of blessing so if you look at malachi chapter 4 verse 6 it talks um, you know the last part it says lest i come and strike the earth with a curse so you know if you take it uh, the other way it is when this is done when the hearts of the fathers turn to the children when the hearts of the children turn to the father there will be a blessing you are positioning yourself for a for a blessing so as a father as a husband that leadership of taking and nurturing the home belongs to you and it it is something as a, as a man as a husband you take on the responsibility to do of overseeing <clears throat> of being able to lead yes the wife stands as a helper wife stands as a support to doing that maybe largely probably a lot of the ground work is done there but as a husband you are to stand you are to not compromise on that role of leading and nurturing the children in faith and in the things of god okay so as you're doing that what are you doing is you are creating an environment for the complete development of the child it's like um you know the greenhouse i'm i'm sure we've all um, no seen a greenhouse either in a um, you know in a botanical garden and uh, that that specific greenhouse is kept there and the environment is completely controlled and protected and the plants that are in there are monitored and uh, you know they have the right sunlight they have the right kind of um uh manure the right kind of water the conditions are 
are intentional, the conditions are monitored. Similarly, um, our homes should be an environment which, which has the, the culture of God that, that is, um, is sown in so that there is a complete, a holistic development of the children. And that belongs to, the, that role is what belongs to the parents, where you are creating an environment of the things of God. So creating an environment where there is love, where there is faith, where there is peace, where there is joy, where there is holiness, where there is righteousness. And that comes, you know, it, it comes trickled only by the parents to the children. And even in, uh, in an environment like that, you also do give space and encourage the children to begin to pursue what God's put in their hearts, maybe pursuing different interests or helping them develop certain certain principles and techniques, and, uh, sorry, skills and values that will build them up. So in an environment like this, you're not only encouraging um, the development of the spirit, but also the body and the soul. So uh, again, the responsibility of parenthood is not just ensuring that you know they are fed well they are they are they are educated well they have enough skills to make it in life probably as part of a career but a lot more so this nurturance that we are talking about is not just nutrition and education it's it's a, a whole lot more of teaching them about skills that they need to deal with life uh, teaching them about the faith in god to you know which is the most important treasure that a parent can give to a child because apart from it apart from it there is nothing that that uh, they can achieve so when we're looking at nurturance, it is like a greenhouse. So think of your home like a greenhouse where you are, uh, the conditions are monitored and it is intentional, it is protected, it is controlled in order to bring them up in, um, in the things of God as well as in helping them to lead their life uh, as a good example, as a good testimony. So, so the... Uh, that's the responsibility of us as parents to be able to create that environment. Now, in doing so, what are we also, um, uh, uh, you know, attempting to do is uh, to understand if if we, uh, I think we've spoken about this the last time, but just to reiterate a bit more that all our children are, I mean, anyone born in the image of God is created uniquely, is created special, which means when God designed every person or when, when we look at our children, when God designed every child, there was there were things that he put into each person. Uh, there maybe it's it's a it's a passion for something it's a gift for something or it's a desire to do something and uh, we, they, all of us are made differently so it's almost you know I, I would liken it like you know when you get a package you don't know what's in the package but you're waiting to discover to see what you will find in the specific package you have so Think of it that way, that whenever God creates uh, a child or creates a human being, there is definitely so much potential packed in them, no matter who they are, what they, what their history is, so much of potential packed in them. And God has given the parents um, uh, the, the, I think, uh, should be, we should be inclined to be able to discover that. Okay. When you look at uh, the verse that I, you know, Psalm 139 captures it so beautifully, you know, where he's, where you see how God um, has personally and individually invested in each individual, right? So I'm, I'm just going to read that uh, 
um, for you. So it says, um, I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they were all written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious are your thoughts to me, O oh God, how great is the sum of them. So we see that God has placed different skills and giftings in the lives of our children. And we as parents are there as stewards to encourage them to discover that to be able to be in that journey of discovery. So uh, again, remember that each person goes through a different kind of journey. There may be some that you will um, uh, notice those giftings right from the beginning, you know, children who sing and, um, you know, make songs and play music at, a, at an early age. Some of them, yes, uh, it is there evidently seen. Some of them may need to discover it. However, we know that God has placed uh, a gifting in each one of our children. And it is for us to be able to help them to journey through life, to be able to uh, you know, capture it, to guide them through it, to help them to learn and develop maybe certain skills to improve that. Whatever we are called to do is to is to provide those opportunities so that uh, we help to nurture what God has placed inside of them. So remember, every time you look at your child, look at them as a package where there is something to be discovered each new day, because God has marvelously, fearfully, wonderfully made them and skillfully put them there and hidden those things in them and it is for us to bring out that uh, you know those those best things that god has put into their lives so um, when we look at our children we look at them as um, um, as individuals who are created for influence and created for impact Okay. Um, when you look at the verse in Psalm 112, verse 2, it says, The good man's children will be powerful in the land, and his descendants will be blessed. Now, this is something that God has declared about your children and my children. It says, The righteous, the, the children of the righteous, the other verses, uh, sorry, other versions say that the righteous man's offspring or the children of the righteous will be powerful in the land and they, their descendants will be blessed. So our children carry power and carry blessing and they're designed to be powerful, designed to have impact and influence. And what is our role is to um, uh, kindle that potential, to bring it out, to you know light the fire so that it can start burning. And how do we do that? There may be certain practical ways in being able to do that. We can't expect that the best in our children will come out if we are constantly berating them, constantly belittling them, constantly um, uh, picking out things that they don't do well, constantly trying to um, improve their character rather than commending some of the things of their character. So there are certain ways that we should be um, working towards to help out to bring the best in them. And, you know, it's, it's like this. When you're baking cookies, if you're not going to put it in, um, in a uh, in a uh, you know in in the oven which has the optimum heat it's either going to burn or it's going to become underbaked right it has to become optimum and for the right time so similarly you know we need to ensure that we give them like the greenhouse controlled intentional ways of building up that environment so speaking things that are uh, bless uh, a blessing over them, you know, speaking positively to them to encourage and to build their uh, their their uh, sense of worth or their sense of confidence. 
uh, finding things in their character that you can actually highlight and, uh, you know, appreciating them for taking some of those steps forward to build themselves up or uh, helping them to uh, and journeying with them in order to make good choices and also uh, you know walking alongside with them when they make those wrong cho wrong choices and uh, or you know just being with them when they are emotionally finding it difficult to make those choices on their own that doesn't mean we step in and make choices for them but we are there encouraging them helping them building them up to guiding them with wisdom to make those choices and it could be, and yes these things do take time these things do take intention because you know like for example maybe your child would just come up and say you know i don't know what to do i don't know whether i have to take up this kind of a career or this kind of a career so the easiest work for a parent is hey you know this is a is the best option because i know the 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 pros and the cons of this but then you know, you've clipped your child, you, you really haven't been able to give them the ability to decision make, rather sit with him, sit with him, maybe it's for weeks, it's for months, but being able to engage in a conversation, helping him find out what are the details of path A or career A or career B, um, working it alongside with them really builds and encourages uh, not just finding a career, but the ability to make decisions, the ability to make choices. So yes, engaging uh, with them through that process. Now, there are times that children are going to fail. And, uh, you know, I keep saying this, that our homes are like a laboratory. You know, it's like, like a science laboratory where um, before they are launched out into the world, this is the best, the lab is the best place where you can make mistakes in your experiments, right? You can blow it up and you can spill it and you can make a wrong concoction that's the best place so standing with them as they make their mistakes in the home is so vital for them to be more confident to address failures and um, ad address successes as they move out into the world so helping them do that uh, is uh, and the environment that we create is what really brings about the best in the children and these things cannot be done if we don't spend time and uh, uh, space for communication, to be able to spend time regularly with them, to talk to them, uh, I think more than talking, uh, I've, I've figured the principle of listening is better as the children grow older. Of course, there is, um, and the, the kind of things that I'm, I'm, I'm learning right now is more than bringing up statements, questions really help them to think and questions really help me to understand so as you place questions being uh, in a place of listening and helping them to just speak whatever maybe you know things in their lives things that they're struggling with um, things that maybe interest them and as we're doing so, you know, you're encouraging them with, with uh, your love, with your presence, with your support, with your wisdom. And continue. I think it's uh, as you spend more time with them, you get to know them. You're also um, uh, putting in so much in their lives that because of that um, just that space for meaningful conversations in itself will help to bear a good fruit at a later point of time. So uh, ensuring that there is time and, and room that you build with the children for conversations. And, uh, you know, the best way to do that is also uh, informally, um, like as in, in scripture says in Proverbs 25, 11, the right word at the right time is like uh, a piece of jewelry, right? So when you say the right things at the right time, uh, that's when it catches it best. So so use so doing that even at informal times. So something that uh, you know I I used to do with the kids uh, earlier, you know, as they were growing into their <laughs> teens, to get them to start thinking about different things, is you know when we when we used to go out when we're on the street, we may see. Uh, probably a couple of kids um, either 
you know, maybe there's smoking or someone who's recklessly driving a, a bike without a helmet or doing a wheelie, uh, you know, things that can be absolutely risky and um, dangerous, uh, you know, because understanding um, that as as someone in their youth, you know, in between the ages of 14 to 19, uh, risk taking behavior is so high and often uh, judgment doesn't prevail there. Right. So something I do is, you know, when we when I do notice these things like this, I bring it up as a question and I ask them, what do you think about this or what do you feel about this or how what do you say about you know what you're seeing um, so i think another example is the, the the kind of billboards or the ads that do come up uh, you know in in the entertainment uh, screen and you find so many things that are uh, obscene and uh, revealing and language that is used that is um you know that is unholy um it is easier for a parent to probably dismiss it and um, pretend as if your child has not heard but it takes intention to bring it up and raise it up and uh, because by doing so that's when you're actually building godly principles so uh, you know maybe as you're watching a movie there are things that uh, you see values and principles of god that aren't being uh, displayed or portrayed there bringing that up and bringing it up as a discussion and i mean not really going and saying okay this is what the word of the lord says you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that which means you know you've just done your work and says okay i've done what i did whether it makes sense to them or not i don't care but i think it's to engage them in understanding where they are at what are their thoughts of it you know what do you think about premarital sex what do you think about multiple relationships what do you think about extramarital affairs now while that's the while that's happening you are able to use those moments to teach them what the word of god says and what you as a family stand up for 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 the child to know that nurturing comes from the specific word of god it's not an idea that we are picking up because it sounds good it's something because we honor and want to obey god so using those moments to to help children um, uh, know different things about life. And, uh, you know, I, I, I always do tell parents also is be practical in the way that you nurture your children. There may be times that you have an underlying biblical truth, okay? But the way that it is presented to the children uh, or the way that it is discussed with the children you know, you may not be saying Bible verse and chapter, but there is the underlying biblical truth or principle that we are bringing out. OK. And of course, letting them know that there are things that 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 the Lord loves. Uh, God, God loves when we keep to his law. Yet we are people of grace, but he loves that we keep to his law. We keep to his word because it is given to us um, for our benefit and for our blessing. So, you know, use practical methods as well as um, around it well when you are teaching scripture uh, the next of course important thing as you nurture <clears throat> children is nurturing their faith right and uh, when we look at um, and maybe i'd like somebody to read um, the second a part of that verse is uh, page 173, which is Deuteronomy 6, 5 to 9. Deuteronomy 6, 5 to 9. I, I, there are many verses. I mean, you could take some time to read it later, but I, I just want to highlight this one. Deuteronomy 6, 5 to 9. Would somebody kindly read that? Shall I read now? Sure, sure. Go ahead, Abhi. Deuteronomy 6, 5 to 9 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Never forget these commands that I am giving you today. Teach them to your children. Repeat them when you are at home and when you are away, when you are resting and when you are working. Tie them on your arms and wear them on your foreheads as a reminder. Write them on the doorposts of your houses and on your gates. Amen. 
Thank you. Thank you, Avni. So, um, I, you know, I love this verse because there's so much of uh, treasure in this verse, and I want to unpack that for you. Okay. So the responsibility that we are given as parents is to teach our children about the word of God, to teach them about who he is, to teach them about his uh, work, his ways, about what he's done for us. And if you look in this verse, it's it um, you know it encourages you to 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 do it at all times. Now, if you look at verse five, there's a specific instruction that it is given to parents. So, if you need to teach your children about God, what do you need to do? Look at verse five. It says, "Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength." So you should be in a position of a strong relationship with God the Father um, to be able to do that. Okay, so developing your own personal relationship with God is vital in as you teach the children, as you nurture them uh, in faith. Okay, and if you look at it in verse seven, it says, "Teach these commands to your children." Teach it to them in your to your children. Repeat them when you're at home uh, and when you are away, when you're resting, when you're working. So if you if you look at the different times that it says, it's when you're at home. What are you doing when you're at home? You're probably relaxing, or when you're away, maybe you're relaxing. When you're resting, or when you're working, or even when it's something that is that's more formal. So you teach it to them, not just informally. Uh, sorry, not just formally, and those formal parts of it may be, you know, sending the kids to a Sunday school or to a Bible class. Yes, they may be more, more formal kinds of teaching, but also something that is done informally when you're just sitting at home and you're relaxing and you know, you're having fun, choosing every opportunity to be able to teach them the Word of God. Look at verse eight. It says, "Tie them on your arms and wear them on your foreheads as a reminder." If you look at, you know, when we when we look at arms and when we look at forehead, arms have everything to do with your actions, and forehead has everything to do with your mind and your thoughts. So, so it's saying, you know, let the word of God um, be in in your actions and as as well as in your mind in your thoughts so it's not just about the behavior but it's also about the heart so when you are giving the word of god to them it's not just that they come up with an impeccable behavior but also a holy heart you know we we've, we've read that in scripture so many times god guard the heart because it's the wellspring of life so to be able to do that um to help them and to teach them in in not just in uh, what they think or in their in their uh, sorry not in what they do but also in their um, heart. Uh, the ninth verse it says, "Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates." So you know, if you look at that, um, uh, you know, sometimes we take it so literally. We we'll say, "Okay, we put verses up on the uh, in the house." Good. I mean, it's wonderful. Please do that. But I think there's so much more depth than that. It says, "Write them on the doorposts of your house." So ensure when you teach your children that they are in a place that they will follow your commands. In the private setting of your home, doorpost is something that you know you don't allow anyone else to walk in, just like that. Yeah, it's the doorpost is something that's protected and it's private. So uh, let them be in a place that they can honor your word, even in the private parts of their life, just like they do on the public and on your gates, meaning the public square. You know, pub the gates are open to anyone to walk in. You generally don't have a guard at, at the gate, but you may have a guard in your, you know, you lock up your door so that no one can just walk in. At least in India, that's how it is. Right? The gates are open, but the doors are locked. So uh, it says, teach them formally, teach them informally, uh, let it, let it, come out in their actions just as much as it comes out from their heart. Uh, let this word dwell in their private lives just as it would in their public lives. So, so do you see how much of, um, uh, you know, 
uh, how much of a responsibility you and I have as a parent to be able to integrate the word of God, not just on the outside, but in within their depth. So, uh, so as a parent, we choose every opportune moment um, to bring about God's word creatively to them, bring it about in truth, bring it about at the right time. Right. And some of them, uh, you know, you know that, uh, and, and I think in my personal journey, I've seen that the times that I'm, you know, just so lost, uh, a quick a quick prayer and say, Holy Spirit, make this the right moment that I'm able to bring about something that you want me to say. And it, it happens. It just, you know, the Holy Spirit gives you the right thing to to say and to and to lead them at okay so sometimes it's not just saying anything it's just probably a hug or a, or a show of love or a show of comfort for them that helps them see you know god's love through you so doing this intentionally is what we are called to do um i, I think um, there are so many resources that are there and uh, doing it, some of them with them, uh, you know, studying the word of God with them, finding small exercise uh, to do with them is always helpful. And um, uh, if, if you look at, you know, in our website itself, there are many books that you can walk along with your children with, you know, help them as they make that journey with, with God. Okay, uh, I'll stop here. Uh, just two minutes. Would any of you have any questions uh, before we stop for a break? Any questions? Yes, Samuel, go ahead. Um, sort of more of a comment. Uh, okay. Um, something that uh, that's uh, that I. You know, from, and this is largely uh, from my own uh, life, which is um, I think, uh, or I I know that uh, you know Christian kids, uh, children, uh, believers, children, uh, actually do not fit into the world as as believers. It's uh, you know like we we you not call it to the world. And I think the same principle applies to us. Um, that is lost. Samuel, are you sorry? I think you're breaking up. Uh, is this? Am I only the one not able to hear, or is everyone not able to hear, Samuel? Uh, can you hear me now, Pastor? Yeah, 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 that's better. Hello. Yes. Yeah, that's better, Samuel. Go ahead. So, uh, sorry. So, um, what I was saying is, um, I think, um, or Christian kids, um, as Christians are, or as believers are, um, in, 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 in a lot of ways, uh, or, or in, in the truest of sense, do not belong to the world, uh, you know, are not called to conform to the world. Um, you know, as as per biblical principles, we are to set a whole different standard, and and uh, you know the the kingdom standard. Um, and I think as mature uh, individuals, a lot of us understand that. But uh, raising kids in in that principle is sort of challenging because um, there there's, there comes a time when uh, children, you know, like first, you know, we are uh, the. the for, for the children, uh, their immediate tribe is uh, their mom, dad, and probably the siblings. But there comes a time when they start exploring the outside world and they start uh, trying to create their own tribe and, and uh, you know, also explore their own identity in the world. Um, uh, and and uh, a part of that means uh, to be accepted in the society, to kind of fit in, like, you know, even me as as growing up i would want to fit into my friend circle i would want to fit into my college i would want to fit into my classroom and and uh, kids i think as children we go to learn we go at lens to kind of fit in and uh, and and that's when the whole thing of peer pressure and and whatnot comes in um, so i feel um this whole lesson on 
lesson to our kids that you know yeah you need to make friends and you need to f- be accepted in the society but at the same time you don't conform to the society and and maybe everyone in your class is excited about this party where they'll be this is the first time where a lot of them will be drinking or smoking and and the whole class is kind of internally excited the adults don't know about it and uh, at times you know in a, in a class of 40 kids you know my kid may be the only one who has to say like no i will not be and and i think that's so hard for a 13 14 15 year old i mean that's that's really really tough um so and i think i mean my i, I my daughter is just five now but <laughs> i i i constantly prepare for the this you know like how to because i, I mean from my own life i i feel a lot of mistakes that i did was in in my attempt to fit into the society and only when later realizing that actually i'm not called to fit into the society but actually to be different but then how does you know how does a 15 year old understand that i think um, yeah that's that's the tricky part for me yeah but, uh, i agree sam that that is definitely not easy and uh, i think that's why as a parent you stand as a friend you stand as a guide you stand as a as a support to walk them through that um not always successful there are times that they're going to fail and i think when when i look back at my own journey um um uh, probably a lot of us uh feel that way maybe we didn't have many people to stand alongside with us mm. maybe as much as our children do at this time you know with a lot of awareness and with a with so much of community that there is uh, it wasn't there in, at least in my time we were all isolated singled out and we lived it uh, difficult and uh, i'm i'm sure the baggage of that continues in some way or the other but of course we are redeemed and that's our hope but nevertheless i think as a parent that's why we are called to live with them daily to nurture them on a regular basis and see them through those those struggles especially these adolescent uh, these adolescent years mm-hmm. okay. Thank you thank you Sam all right so uh, let's close for a break it's 10:56 on my clock we will get back at 11:6 10 minutes and we'll be back see you soon <laughs> 